What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to go over question 18 in the 8th grade math questions that North Carolina released this past school year. We can see that the question is just asking us to find the rate of change of the linear function that has a graph that passes through the points 2, 9, and negative 1, 3. So to do a question like this, we just need to know how to find slope, which is another word for rate of change, from two points that a problem gives us. There was another question just like this where I used the graph and then moved on to the slope formula. This time though, I'm just gonna use the slope formula, but I will talk about um, one way that it's a little easier to use than we might think. So first, what actually is the slope formula? Well, first I need to name all of my numbers. Here's my first point and here's my second point. First point has an x and a y, so that's x1 and y1, the first x and the first y. The second point has an x and a y, second x and second y, also known as x1, y1, x2, and y2. And now what exactly am I going to do with those numbers? Well, if you remember, or if you don't, I'm going to find the difference in my y's and divide it by the difference in my x's. So let me go ahead and plug some numbers in here. I'll come over here to do this. y2 was 3 minus y1 was 9. This is being divided by x2, which was negative 1, minus x1, which was 2. So now I need to do a little bit of arithmetic, and I see 3 minus 9, and I can do that in my calculator or in my head, but either way, I should get negative 6, and I see negative 1 minus 2, and I tell myself, okay, that's just 1 plus 2 with a negative sign in front of it, so that's negative 3. So my slope is negative 6 over negative 3. But now I can go ahead and simplify. I'll get rid of my, let me scoot that up so you can see it. I'll get rid of my negative signs. Simplify this by dividing numerator and denominator by 3. And that equals positive 2. So my slope is just 2. Now, y'all do know that I like to say that slope is like how far up or down we're going divided by how far right we're going. And in most other cases, I would actually take 2 and say that it's actually 2 over 1. Because according to this like directions way of thinking about slope, this would tell me that I go 2 up for every 1 that I go right. But North Carolina will not accept that most likely. They'll just want us to write the number 2 in for our slope. So that's 2. And I find my 2 bubble and bubble it in. Now there is one more aspect of this that I want to talk about and that's what if the points were in a different order? What if instead of x1, y1, x2, and y2 it were a different way? where this was our x2 and y2, this was our x1 and y1, and we still had to work with that same formula. Well, I'll go ahead and just do that. Now our y2 would be 9, and our x or and our y1 would be 3. Our x2 would be 2, and our x1 would be negative 1. This is 9 minus 3, which is 6 over 2 minus negative 1, which is the same thing as 2 plus 1, if you know this trick, over 3. So 6 over 3 is essentially the same as what we got here. We just had negative signs in our numerator and denominator. This would still simplify down to 2. The point of all this was, even if our points were switched around, we could still get the same slope, because we could still use the same directions of going 2 up and 1 right to get from one point to the other. Um, and... The only thing you need to keep track of, though, is to make sure that you're using the same point on the left and right in both of your subtraction expressions. Um, otherwise, that's where you'll run into some problems.